So we've got our shirt here all ready to rock and roll and make it not look like this anymore. Well, first, this is the side seam that we're gonna be working with right here. Then we gotta get our materials ready. We need a sewing machine, some sewing pins, some fabric scissors, a measuring tape. Oh, and pinking shears, but they're optional, like super optional. Like don't go out and buy them specifically for this tutorial. Now, here, here's the problem, here's the problem. Look, uh, look at this side seam right here. Look at this. This makes absolutely no sense. Does the side of your body go on a straight line, a perfectly straight line like that? No, it doesn't. It's not okay, we wanna change this. Well, how do we do that? First, we gotta measure the distance between our armpit seam and the very bottom of our shirt. And that distance on this shirt is 19 and a half inches. And depending on the size of shirt that you're working with, your shirt might be 18 inches long, it might be 22 inches long. The distance of your shirt isn't really a factor. The only reason why you wanna measure the distance or the length of your shirt here is so that you can put four pins in here in equal distance apart. And we're gonna do just that. I'm gonna put a pin at four inches, another one at eight inches, another one at 12 inches, and another one at 16 inches. We got an extra half inch at the bottom between that last pin and the bottom of our shirt, but it's all good in the hood. I'm SD, and if you're new, what I like to do on this channel is show guys like you how to binge tailor every single garments in their closet. So if that sounds interesting to you, be sure to click that subscribe button and join us. Well, we got our pins in here. What are we, what are we doing with these pins? I don't really get it. Well, this is right here. This is the fun part. This is the part where we can make this shirt look any way that we want to. I'm gonna share my measurements with you in a second, but I wanna make sure to tell you that my measurements are not hard and fast rules by any means. So you're gonna wanna play around with these numbers and play around with these measurements just to see how you feel about them. I like to give Give my shirts a nice V taper, but this isn't about me. This is about you. You get to make your shirt fit you however you want to. Now let's uh, let's do some magic with these pins, shall we? So this top pin right here, I put this pin at one and a half inches, and then the second pin right here, this one goes in to two and a half inches. Same with this bad boy right here, two and a half inches. And then this one down here, this bottom one, I have this one either come out to another inch and a half, or I might even do an inch with this one. And then I do the same thing with the other side. Now I've got both sides pinned up right here. Try it on, see how you feel about the fit of this. And if you like the fit at that point, then we can proceed. But if you don't like the fit, well this is the part where you again, play around with these pins and the measurements. In case you're wondering, yes, you can use safety pins for this step, but just make sure you take them out before you use them on your sewing machine because you don't want to use safety pins. They're really cumbersome to take out and just Super annoying. So you like the fit? Good, okay, we're gonna take these pins out and we're gonna flip our shirt inside out. And you might be thinking, oh, so we're not uh, we're not gonna be sewing on the outside of our shirt, we're sewing on the inside, right? Yes, we are. Pro tip, copy all of these measurements down that you just made onto like a sheet of paper or in Google Docs, so that way when you go out and buy the same size shirt in another brand or in the same brand, you can skip all of this. Yeah, I just saved you hours of your life. So let's replicate everything we just did. So we got one side all pinned up here and you might be thinking, okay, Okay, so now what, do we just, do we slide our shirt over and then pin the same side of our shirt here? No, we don't. We're actually gonna be pinning the other side of our shirt. And the reason why we're gonna pin this side is, hang on, I'll tell you in a second. See my orientation of my pins here? And do you see the direction that they're all facing in? When you're sewing it, your sewing machine is gonna be on this side. So it's just gonna be marching on through, just like that. And as we go along, we can just bloop, plug these pins out as we go along, put them where they go, and we will be done with this seam in like a second. When you pin it up, pin up this side, so now you have the benefit of taking advantage of where your sewing machine is twice. Ng -ng 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 -ng. Again, just boop, pull the pins out as we go along. All right, I'm gonna stop making sewing machine noises. Let's, uh, let's go sew this bad boy. Yo, what kind of stitch are we making? Oh, uh, a straight stitch, 2.5 millimeters in length. Why? Because that's how our shirt was manufactured and we just, we wanna make sure to replicate that. What kind of needle are we using? Um, a universal needle 
80-12. Why? Because it's a good jack of all trades sewing machine needle which is going to be able to handle this t-shirt in addition to a number of other things well just fine. And what kind of thread are we using? Polyester thread. Why? Well because unlike cotton thread polyester thread is flexible and it's going to be able to move and bend and stretch with us and we don't have to worry about ripping a side seam when we're wearing our tailored t-shirt. All right good you're paying attention let's have at it. And we're going to start off by back stitching our stitch in which is going to lock this straight stitch in and then then we're going to go forward. So you're going to see my machine go forward and then it's going to go back a couple millimeters and then it's going to go forward again. Oh, I lost my thread. Hang on, we got to rethread it. As we get close to this armpit seam right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly angle my shirt out that way so that once we get up here, once we get all the way up there, we're going to try and phase this stitch out right in, right through this corner right here. We're not tailoring or doing anything to the sleeves on this shirt. If you want to connect these two, we would just keep going all the way straight through. We would have a couple pins in our sleeve up there. We would just keep going all the way through our armpit seam down to the end of our sleeve. But since we're not doing that, we're just going to ease it on out here. Backstitch it to lock it in so we don't get any uh, accidents while we're in public. And then we're good to go. Do the same thing on the other side of the shirt. Just play connect the dots. So this is what we got so far. We have a new, uh, we put a straight stitch all along down right here. We gave it a much more, uh, much more attractive and just flattering looking appearance to it by giving it a nice, a nice taper. My line goes just like that, nice and gradual. That's exactly what you want. You want your lines to be gradual and see how it goes straight. And then it kind of juts out a little bit aggressively like that. When it goes like that, you can get a dimple. I didn't, but it's a possibility. So you want to be careful with how while you're playing connect the dots when you're sewing. Two ways we can fix this is one, we can use more pins while we're playing connect the dot to kind of just make that line easier to follow. Or you can use Taylor's chalk and just draw a line on your shirt and just follow along that. I used to use my daughter's sidewalk chalk in the beginning. True story. And in the event that this was too aggressive for me and then I tried it on and I didn't like it, is I just start my stitch right there. I go back, I put my shirt on my machine, I start right there, I go down, and then I'll end up having two lines. I'll have this original one and then you'll see it kind of just keep going just off to the side just like that do to do to do and then I'll angle it out and you'd never know in a million years if that's what I did because we're cutting all that extra fabric that's beyond that seam that we just made we're cutting all that off this side's good too nice uh nice even and gradual uh taper there but we're not done yet we need to uh we got to cut all this extra fabric off right here and we're gonna need to finish our seam we can do that in one of two ways one we can use some pinking shears which are going to cut a nice zigzag pattern on the edge of this as it cuts or what we could do is we could cut our seam off with a regular pair of scissors here but that's not going to prevent any of this from fraying so what we would end up doing is we'll put a zigzag stitch on the edge to prevent it from fraying. Both options are super easy I'm going to show you both of them. Let's start with the pinking shears. And with these pinking shears, we can just cut it however we want to. We don't necessarily need to be mindful of how much fabric we want to leave on here. We just want to make sure that it's not too long to where it's uncomfortable, but it's also not too short to where it's way too close to that stitch that we just made. A lot of people like to quantify things, and you might be that guy. So if that's you, to give you a number, just go for like about a half an inch or so. Now let's do the zigzag stitch. Now before we cut this, we do want to be mindful of how much we're cutting off when we're just using a regular regular pair of scissors. We are going to want to leave a seam allowance and a seam allowance is just the distance between that stitch that we just made and the edge of our garment. We want it to be 5 eighths of an inch but it doesn't have to be super precise like that. Give or take I don't know, a couple millimeters or centimeters or whatever it is. Don't worry about it. We just want to make sure that we leave enough to make a adequate and proper zigzag stitch on that edge. If it's too small, then we can't do it. If it's too big, then it just looks stupid. A zigzag stitch is when instead of your needle just staying stationary right in the middle as you're sewing a straight stitch, it actually moves from side to side as it goes along. And as it goes side to side, it overlaps the edge of your garment as it goes along, preventing it from disintegrating in the washing machine. True story, I had to find that out the hard 
hard way. Now the zigzag stitch can trip some people up when they do it. You just want to make sure the edge of your fabric is right in the middle of your presser foot there because we want to make sure that the needle adequately goes from side to side on both edges here. So what it's going to do is the needle is going to go into the fabric on this side and then it's going to come off. You're going to see it and think like, wait, isn't it supposed to go on like the whole thing? Nope. Lock it in first. Oh, here we go. That's what's up. So check this out here. So we ended up coming off of our thread back here, but we started sewing all the way up there. Well, what, what's going on? Ah, I ruined my shirt. No, 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 you didn't. Don't panic, don't worry. We're just gonna cut this off and we're gonna start our zigzag stitch right back here. We're gonna lock it in. It's gonna be like it never happened. Don't worry. Just line it up where we lost it, lock it in, locking our the new stitch that we're about to make and that old stitch back there that we ended up losing. And again, it's like it never happened. It's all good in the hood, brother. And I'm coming off. My fabric's coming off a bit. So this is okay. We can just push it right back up there. All good. Fabric came right Rolled up, all good in the hood. Our needle might be through here, so we're gonna make sure to turn our needle dial forward, never ever away from you. So just move our needle up. We're gonna raise our presser foot to get our fabric back under there, all the way. Perfect, and the only people who were gonna know about that even happening in the first place are you and me and the other 1.7 million people who have now watched this video because, well, you shared it, right? Boom. This shirt looks amazing now. Holy smokes, what a transformation. Let's go pair it with a pair of DIY Chino shorts, no pun intended. We are doing just that in the end card. I'll see you on the other side. SD out, deuces.